hello welcome to another english class today we'll be looking at um, a very vital topic and that's adverbial clause yes we've actually taken something related to this before but it was adverbial phrase so today we want to look at adverbial clause closely believing that by the end of the lesson uh, students will be able to define adverbs and adverbial clause states the function and mention the types yes that's what we desire that we achieve by the end of the lesson not at the end but by the end of the lesson all right i will kick off by letting us know that adverbs are different from adverbials yes adverbs are different from adverbials and that would see by the end of the lesson so an adverb basically modifies a verb an adjective and other adverbs adverbs modify verbs adjectives and other adverbs she sang beautifully beautifully is the adverb that modifies the verb sang it tells us how she sang all right so she is very outstanding she is very outstanding outstanding is the adjective and very is the adverb how outstanding very outstanding is the adverb that modifies the adjectives and we said that adverbs as well modify other adverbs she did the job quite slowly she did the job quite slowly quite is a degree of adjective modifying the how of the job done all right so that being said one more thing remember that we said that in english language we have two word modifiers and they are adjectives and adverbs adverbs are word modifiers because they add extra meaning to a sentence so let's move to adverbial clause the focal point for today adverbial clause is a dependent clause that modifies a verb an adjective or adverb in a sentence so adverbial clause is a dependent clause that modifies a verb an adjective or adverb in a sentence so in other words an adverbial clause is a clause that does the same thing as an adverb it modifies but the only difference now is that adverbial clause is in a sentence form remember we said that clauses are a group of words words adverbs are just words so adverbs are not group of words but they are just words why clauses are group of words we said they have finite verbs they can stand on their own and they make sense all right so that being said have it at the back of your mind that an adverb is different while an adverbial clause is different adverbial clauses make sentences richer by providing additional context and description that standard adverbs cannot i just said that so have it in mind that adverbial clauses make sentences richer adverbs will only modify a particular word but adverbial clauses go the extra mile to make it richer in a contextual form so let's look at how adverbs work now in these sentences we have about four sentences we have adverbs in these sentences and we have adverbial clauses in these sentences so sentence 1 says he bakes cakes weekly when does he bake cake he bakes cake weekly now sentence number 2 having an adverbial clause remember sentence 1 has just an adverb which is weekly that's adverb of time all right then we have the second one he bakes cake when still adverb of time but this one says before he leaves for work every sunday before he leaves for work every sunday so you see that it has gone as far as letting us know not just when but the time that he does it but in sentence 1 we just have the when which is weekly but this one tells us when and the time all right so before he leaves for work every sunday that's when he bakes cake there is specification there is elaboration in the sentence while in sentence 1 it's just weekly we don't know the timing we don't know when but we just know it's weekly so it could be on a monday it could be on a tuesday it could be on a wednesday but here we have that it's every sunday so if you want to meet 
the man who bakes cake weekly and when exactly then you have to come on a Sunday. So that's what adverbial clauses do. Adverbial clauses give extra information, additional information, while ad adverbs just modifies the verb. Ad he bakes cakes when weekly. So we are he's telling us when he bakes the cake, but there is no specification. Then sentence three says, Ellie, my brother agreed to the business proposal. Ellie, my brother, agreed to the business proposal then sentence four says as dollar signs flashed in his eyes my brother agreed to the business proposal so the first sentence uses adverb telling us when he agreed while the second sentence goes further by letting us know what propelled to his agreeing something moved him to agree as dollar signs flashed his eyes. So there is extra information when adverbial clauses are used as against when adverbs are used in a sentence. All right, let's look at the difference between adverbial clause and adverbial phrase. Now, when looking at word formation, we said that words are formed, but that being said, we look at the grammatical units of these formations. We have the sentence, we have the clause, we have the phrase, we have the word, and we have the morphing. We said it that sentences are key. Without a sentence, group of words would not fully pass information. It wouldn't express a particular thought. So from the sentence, we get clauses. From clauses, we get phrases. And from phrases, we get words. Now, clauses we said earlier are a group of words that have finite verbs. They can stand on their own and they make sense. Phrases are the opposite. Phrases are a group of words, yes, but they don't have finite verbs. In this sense, we mean that it is possible to have a verb in a group of words that, has, that can be termed as a phrase, but not a finite verb. Remember, finite verbs show tense finite verbs are the reason why we can say that a sentence is complete so if you do not have a finite verb in a group of words you can refer to that as either a sentence or a clause rather it could be termed as a phrase all right so phrases are a group of words that do not have finite verbs they cannot stand on their own and they don't make sense Imagine someone coming to a place and the person just says, in a hurry, in a hurry. There will be commotion. People will keep looking because no information has been passed. So that's what the phrase does. It can't stand on its own. It doesn't make sense. And there is no finite verb. Let's look at what we have here. It says, an adverbial clause is similar to, but not the same as adverbial phrase. Yes, why do we say it's similar to? Because of the function. They perform the same function. They start with the same adverb. That's why we say it's similar to. The only clear difference between adverbial clause and adverbial phrase is the presence of the finite verb. Aside that, nothing else. All right? So both are a group of words that play the adverb role, exactly, but with one key difference. An adverbial clause contains a subject and a verb while an adverbial phrase does not. That's just what it is. The functions, like I say, are the same. The function of an adverbial clause as well as the adverbial phrase is to modify the verb in the main clause. Remember we said that adverbial clauses are dependent clauses. Adverbial clauses are dependent clauses. It takes us to the fact that we have two types of clauses. You have the main clause and the subordinate clause. The subordinate clause is also called the dependent clause, so don't mix it up. So when we talk about the main clause, we are referring to the independent clause. The main clause is a focal point, and that's why it's called independent. It need not any other type of clause to stand on its own. It can fully stand on its own. It makes sense. It has a finite verb. But the subordinate clause, which is also called the dependent clause, cannot stand on its own. All right, it has a finite verb, and that's what makes it a clause. Why so we could refer to it as a clause as much as it relies on the independent clause. 
All right, so here are a few examples of adverbial phrases. Andy eats his lunch with relish. With relish is the adverbial phrase. You can see that there is no verb there. It doesn't make sense. Someone comes in and says with relish, something is missing. But Andy eats his lunch with relish is a complete sentence. So from this, we are breaking off. Andy eats his lunch is the main clause. And that is obviously where we would get the function. That's the function of an adverbial clause or phrase is to modify the verb in the main clause. And the main clause in the first sentence is Andy eats his lunch. How does he eat this lunch? As adverb of manner, with relish. So looking at it, if it's ready to be in an exam and you ask what's the grammatical name of the group of words written in red, that will be adverbial clause. And the next question obviously will be what is the function? The function is that, I will put my quote, it modifies the verb it's, the verb from the main clause. I do tell my students, adverbial clause and adverbial phrase, they are quite easy compared to other grammatical names. Is the adverbial clause for me, uh, adverbial phrase, two are the easiest compared to other um, grammatical names and the function. All right, let's continue. So we thought through logic that the next bus would come at 2.10. That's another adverbial phrase. And the underline is through logic. How? Through logic. So what's the function? It modifies the verb thoughts. We thought that what happened. Now that's one would ask why we thought. Is it possible that we thought is the um, main clause? Yes, it is. In some sentences we'll have what we we'll call a break of words by virtue of use of our commas, all right? So having this, we can read, we thought that the bus, we thought that the next bus would come at 2.30. So the sentence is still complete. So it's the main clause. Know it that whether the main clause comes fully before the subordinate or the subordinate, or rather the, the phrase, rather comes within the the main clause it is still what it is if it's an adverbial phrase it's an adverbial phrase if it's an adjective uh, adverbial clause then it's also an adverbial clause now let's look at adverbial clauses we've been able to establish the adverbial phrase seeing that adverbial phrases do not have verbs they cannot stand on their own and they don't make sense so let's look at the adverbial clause it says andy eats his lunch faster than every one else eats. Now, looking at this sentence, this is what we call a complex sentence. A complex sentence has one main clause and at least one subordinate clause. All right. So, Andy eats his lunch is the main clause. Faster than everyone else eats is the subordinate clause. Now, it is a subordinate clause. Why? Because it relies on the main clause to have a complete meaning. Now, it is also a subordinate, we can refer to it as a clause, unlike the phrase, because we have the verb eats. Eats shows tense. Remember I told us finite verbs are verbs that show tense. And that's the difference between a phrase and a, a, a clause. A phrase doesn't have a finite verb. And it, even if it has a verb, it is not finite because it won't show tense. Now, tense tells you the time of an action. It says faster than everyone else. It's, it is a simple tense form showing habitual act. So that's showing tense. So whenever a verb doesn't show tense, and by tense we mean time of an action, we've treated that, you will know that that verb obviously isn't a finite verb. Now the second example says we thought because the bus has been so predictable lately that the next one would come at 2.10. Now look at the subordinate clause which says because the bus has been, has been shows tense and that is our present perfect tense. All right, present perfect tense. So because we have tense, it is a clause, unlike the other two examples uh, um, bordering on adverbial phrases. There are, there are variant things like your finite verbs and there is no subject. But here we have a subject, the bus, 
everyone is a subject in the adverbial clause. So that having ex been established, know it that the difference between the adverbial clause and the adverbial phrase is the presence of the subject and the finite verb. Every other thing, it's the same. All right, let's continue. Types of adverbial clause. We are moving now to the focal points. Types of adverbial clause. Having established the fact that adverbial clauses are a group of words um, that function as a subordinate clause in a sentence, we also have to know that adverbial clauses modify verbs. Adverbial clauses modify verbs, not just any verb, but the verb in the main clause. I stated it that a clause has one main um, clause, or rather a sentence has one main clause and one subordinate. So it is in the subordinate that we have our adverbial clause. Now the function will be in the main clause. So adverbial clauses come in many different forms. Each of these forms is characterized by the nature of the information the clause is communicating. So we have types. You have adverb of time, you have adverb of place, you have adverb of manner, you have adverb of concession, you have adverb of degree. So these we are going to look at and the words that introduce them. Once you're conversant with the words that introduce them, you won't have um, any form of difficulty identifying it in your exam and as well the function of that adverbial clause or adverbial phrase. So we are starting with adverbial clause of manner. An adverbial clause of manner describes how the action described in the sentence's main clause is taking place or previously took place. All right? So that is it, how something is done. When the question how is asked, you should know that that's adverbial clause of manner. So we have three examples. The part of the sentence written in red, it's the adverbial clause. Then we will identify the function from the subordinate clause. Right, so it says she addressed the crowd as she had practiced in the mirror. How did she address the crowd? Remember we said adverbial clause of manner answers the question how. So how did she address the crowd as she had practiced in the mirror? So as she had practiced in the mirror is the adverbial clause. Why do we say so? As explained earlier, it is an adverbial clause because it starts with the adverb as and it has a finite verb had practiced, that is past perfect. We said that finite verbs are verbs that show tense. So in this case, this is an adverbial clause. Then the function, it modifies the verb addressed. Remember we said that whatever function we want to indicate from an adverbial clause or adverbial phrase, we must come to the, the main clause. And the main clause it varies. Sometimes the main clause could be at the end of the sentence. Sometimes it could be at the start of the sentence. And that was why I had to present my examples in that manner. So that we wouldn't position our mind that the, sub, the main clause must start a sentence. No. Or because it's the main clause, it should and must start a sentence. It's not done like that. As long as um, complex sentence is concerned, all right, complex sentences are concerned, you can at some point swap the, the conditions. Now it's possible for your subordinate clause to start the sentence. It's possible for the main clause to start. It's possible for the main clause to end the sentence and the subordinate can as well end the sentence. In sentence one, I can start it with, as she had practiced in the mirror, she addressed the crowd. So it's still passing the same information, but the structure of the sentence is what has been tampered with, but the information remains the same. So she addressed the crowd as she had practiced in the mirror. So the function of this adverbial clause is addressed. Now number two says they designed the new product. How did they design it? The way innovators problem solve around design flaws. All right, so the way innovators problem solve around design flaws, it's the adverbial clause, while the function is 
that it modifies the verb designed. Then the last one says he speaks as though he were the boss. He speaks as though he were the boss. He speaks is a complete sentence as a matter of fact. So he speaks as though he's a, he, he were the boss. As though he were the boss, it's the adverbial clause. Then it modifies the verb speak. Now let's look at adverbial clause of place and that um, answers the question where. Adverbial clauses of place describe where the action in a sentence's main clause takes place. The action in the sentence's main clause. Remember that was why I told you that the function will always be identified in the main clause and that is the action. What happened at the point of the adverbial clause disposition? That's what you ask yourself and that will help you to identify the function. So let's look at some examples. It says, my son told me another fight broke out where he eats lunch at school. What happened? My son told me. That was what his son did. This was the action that took place where he eats lunch at school. So they drove beyond where the city ends. The function modifies the verb drove. I signed my name where he showed me. Where he showed me is the subordinate clause, adverbial clause of place. Then the function, it modifies the verb signed. Then we have he went where his manager sent him. He went where his manager sent him. Where his manager sent him is the adverbial clause of place. Then the function, it modifies the verb went. Right, we're moving forward. Let's look at adverbial clause of condition. That's the use of if to show until you do this, I will not do this. That's when you give someone condition. So remember I told us there are certain keywords. Once you see these keywords introducing the subordinate clause, you know that it's an adverbial. All right, so with an adverbial clause of condition, you can communicate the conditions related to the verb, adverb, or adjective in the sentences main clause. Everything is in the main clause. That's where you can have your function. So these examples demonstrate a few ways to use adverbial clauses of condition. We will be sitting in the conference room until they tell us to leave. So we can also have this sentence as, until they tell us to leave, we will be sitting in the conference room. We'll be sitting in the conference room. Now, there's something I want to clear. Once you start your sentence with an adverbial clause, all right? Once you start your sentence with an adverbial clause, there's always a tendency that you observe your comma. If you look at sentence two, that's what played out. I try to vary the sentence structure so as to make us understand that there is no particular structure in this forming the sentence as long as adverbial clause is concerned. All right, so we will be sitting in the conference room until they tell us to leave. So until they tell us to leave is a condition. At what point will you leave this place until something happens? So that's it. So we will be sitting in the conference. It's the main clause. Now, let me clear this. Certain times in the main clause, you could see two verbs. Now, when you have two verbs in the main clause and you want to state the function, do not say that it modifies the verb when there are two verbs there. Obviously, once you have two verbs, it is the helping verb with a main verb that cannot function on its own. Now, ing type of verb, I've stated this before, that ing type of verb without the helping verb, it's not a finite verb. So, but once you have the helping verb, it could be your modal helping verb, it could be your primary. The modal helping verb is a secondary helping verb. We have the primary helping verb and we have the secondary helping verb. So, when you have more than one verb in a sentence, please dictate the function as modifying the verb phrase. So once you have more than one verb in a sentence, it's called verb phrase. It could be two, it could be three. So you have to indicate that the function of the particular noun phrase that it modifies the verb phrase will be sitting. So in this sentence we have until they tell us to leave is the adverbial clause. Now the function is that it modifies the verb phrase will be sitting because that's what we'll be doing in the conference room. You can't just, if you write sitting, 
Sitting is not a finite verb. So what makes this sitting pass information properly is the presence of the modal verb will and the auxiliary verb be. So I hope that is taken. So the other example says, whether my husband likes it or not, we will be celebrating thanks given at my parents' house. So that's it. It modifies the verb phrase again. You're saying it will be celebrating. All right, then finally, the teacher will permit me, permit him to go if he finishes his assignment as and, please pardon, this is not an, as and when due, as and when due. All right. So please, not as that when due is as and when due. Let's make correction on that because that's what we basically say as at when due. The right thing is as and when due. So it modifies the verb phrase will permit. When you have two verbs, I'm trying to emphasize on it. You have two verbs in a sentence and you want to dictate the function. You have to state that it modifies a verb phrase. So when you have two verbs in a sentence, it's called verb phrase. We have the adverbial clause of reason. Adverbial clause of reason. That's the, why an act is done. So adverbial clauses of reason tell us the reason for an action or the action being taken in a sentence's main clause. These clauses generally use subordinating conjunction. If time would permit, we we'll look at conjunctions and we'll look at types of conjunctions and how they function. Now, subordinating conjunctions are used in, in subordinate complex sentences. Yes, because complex sentences are made up of the main clause and the subordinate clause. Reason for the use of subordinating conjunction in a complex sentence. So the subordinating conjunctions we have are such words as because, unless, since, until, but not all are used in adverbial clause of reason. Those speaking or bordering on reason are those that are to be used. So we have words like because, unless, and since. So look at some examples. We adopted these two cards. Why? Remember I said adverbial clause of reason asks, answers the question why. Why did you adopt these two cards? Because they are a bonded pair. Because they are a bonded pair, reason for adopting them. All right? So the adverbial clause of reason in this sentence modifies the verb adopted. Then we have sentence two says he's amazing at billiards since he spent his youth working in a pool hall. All right? So since, why? Is he amazing at billiards since he spent his youth working in a pool hall? So it modifies the verb phrase is amazing. Is amazing. Then finally, on the adverbial clause of reason, unless you bless me, I will never let you go. We know the usual saying, unless you bless me, I will never let you go. So I will never let you go is the main clause. Unless you bless me is a subordinate. And obviously, our adverbial clause. So what's the function? It modifies the verb phrase will never. Yes, modifies the verb phrase will never. All right. Then we have adverbial clause of time. Adverbial clause of time answers the question when. So we have um, examples here. It says before she got home, she called and ordered for pizza. The next one says they assembled, dressed, and marched out as the band played. Then lastly, at the time he came, I had left for the occasion. So in all these examples, we can identify the function as well indicate the words that introduce adverbial clause of time. It helps. You wouldn't just state that um, the underlying part in an exam condition that the underlying part of um, the sentence is just an adverbial. You could go an extra mile by indicating the type of adverbial clause or phrase, whether it's adverbial clause of time, adverbial clause of manner, it also gives an edge. All right, let's look at adverbial clause of purpose. 
adverbial clause of purpose. Like adverbial clauses of reason, adverbial clauses of purpose frequently involve subordinating conjunctions. These two kinds of clauses can look similar but have one key difference. While adverbial clauses of reason give the reason why something is happening, adverbial clauses of purpose explain the reason to take a specific action. All right, so you are explaining the reason why a specific action is taken. Examples, we studied all night. What's the reason that you need to explain? So we would pass the exam. So we would pass the exam. So look at the keywords that introduce adverbial clauses of purpose, quite different from adverbial clauses of reason. All right. So the next one says, so that they could ease the traffic flow, what happened? The event organizers split the group into three cohorts. And finally, the students called for a truce. What explanation do you want to give as to why you called for a truce so as to prevent further havoc? So these examples are on adverbial clauses of purpose and the function, the first one, the function modifies the verb studied. The second modifies the verb split. Oh, yes. Then the third modifies the verb called. So you see that adverbial clauses of time, be it time, be it purpose, be it reason, be it place, will always modify the verb in the main clause. Then comparison, adverbial clauses of comparison, it says, they are clauses that communicate how the subject of the dependent clause compares to the subject in the main clause. So there are two types of adverbial clauses of reason, of comparison rather, adverbial clauses of comparison of degree and comparison of manner. That's degree means to what extent, then manner is how. So Felix is, is as good at video games as he is good at weights lifting. So this comparison, adverbial clauses of comparison in respect to degrees. So Felix is as good at video games as he is good at weight lifting. We expected the afternoon class to perform better on the test than. So you see we are also comparing here and it has to do with the degree of comparison. Remember when we looked at adjectives we looked at um, varying degrees of adjectives. That's the comparative degree of adjective and the superlative degree. And I remember mentioning that when we are looking at comparative degree, we use the word than. So this adverbial clause of comparison in relation to the degree is telling us how this class is better off than the other. It says the afternoon class is better than the what, morning class. And that's the comparative degree. Here are a few examples of clauses of comparison of manner. The first example we looked at a comparison of degree, and we saw the words as he is good at weightlifting. Felix is as good. Good is a comparative word. As is used to show something good. All right. When we are comparing two things, as beautiful as that means you're comparing. Then we have that of comp comparison of manner, the events unfolded, how did they unfold as the oracle prophesied, as the oracle prophesied, that was how it unfolded, all right, so remember we said we have adverbial clauses of comparison, it could be comparison of degree, it could be comparison of manner, so when it is degree, two things are being compared, two things, three things, depending, all right, so but when it is of manner, it tells us how it happened. So my wedding vows went as well as I hoped. How did it go? It went as well as I hoped. Now the functions are still the same. Nothing has changed. It obviously modifies the verb in the main clause. So for the comparison of degree, it modifies the verb is for the second expected the first example on that comparison of manner unfolded and the second example went right so we have adverbial clause of concession there is something that ought to be done you are you're supposed to 
exhibit an attitude by virtue of what has been done to you, but you choose not to. That's concession. And um, adverbial clauses of concession are introduced with such words as do or do even do. That's when we call them adverb of concession. You should have done something by virtue of harm done to you, but you, you decide not to. You have every right. You have what it takes, but you said no, you wouldn't want to. So that's where you have sentences as, although I was punished, I still did my assignment. Someone who is punished may decide not to do the assignment, but the person does it. So in an adverbial clause of concession, the writer acknowledges or admits a factor that modifies the main clause. Take a look at these adverbial clauses of concession. So despite how I had good intentions, the interaction went horribly wrong. Despite how I had good intentions, that's the adverbial clause of concession. What happened? The interaction went. That's a function. It modifies the verb went. The second one says the department head hired the first person they interviewed, though 20 people applied for the job. And lastly, although he was preferred amongst all, he was punished the most. You can imagine. Although he was preferred amongst all, he was punished the most so it modifies the verb phrase was punished all right having come to the end of the class we have to go through one or two questions in our exam guide app and to attempt questions on adverbial clause we will be looking at the comprehension part of exam questions pardon me to go through my searched questions and um, to start off I will go to this, that's um, 20, is that, two? okay, it's 2017. Remember, adverbial equations on grammatical names and functions bother on comprehension. Though sometimes in other external exams, it can actually be done. In other external exams, it can, university, such questions can come up. So you're not limited, your knowledge is not limited just for um, secondary exams, no. Even in universities, such questions are asked as long as you do your GST courses, use of English. All right, so let's look at this comprehension passage. How do I know, someone may ask, how do I know um, that such question will be asked? Now, in a comprehension passage, you will see some um, aspects of the passage underlined. Some could be underlined. Some people could um, adopt the format of writing, writing the desired um, group of words in italics, but um, whichever way, uh, you either it's underlined or written in italics, know that something must be asked whenever a group of word is underlined. So here we have, as we watched from the distance, remember this is, we go to where the sentence is entirely. So this is it, as we watched from a distance, they started with the subordinate clause, we observed that there was a rhythm movement and gradually a curled creature stretched out. We don't need all of these. So I've seen where the sentence started and I've seen what happened. That's one thing with adverbial clause or phrase. So as shows adverbial clause of what time. It said as we watched at the time, we watched from a distance. So this is adverbial clause of time. How do I know it's adverbial clause of time? because of the word as that introduces time, then I know it is adverbial, it's clause because there is a finite verb watched. What, why do I say that watched is a finite verb? I say it's a finite verb because finite verbs are those verbs that show tense and watched shows past tense that the action happened in the past. So this is adverbial clause of time and it modifies the verb observed. That's the function. Remember in this exam, they will ask, what is the grammatical name given to this expression as used in the passage, not outside, the, as used in the passage. So as used in the passage, it is adverbial clause of time. Look at it, perfect. All right? So, but unfortunately, they didn't ask us to state the function, but I'm giving us the function now, that the function is in the main clause, and this is the main clause. We observed that there was so as we watched from a distance, what happened? That thing that happened while people or while you or while someone was watching, it's the function. So the function 
is it modifies the verb. And in writing your verb, you open your single quotation, double quotation, write the word observed, and close the quotation. All right, let's take another one. If there be any, then I would leave you to try out on your own and see how far you have learned. Let's look at 20, okay, 2011. Let's see if we have something of that nature there. Okay, that's the same one that we just finished now. Let me, let's look at 2012. All right. All right, we have another one here. Okay, look at it. It says, as soon as the cheat chat ended, as soon as the cheat chat ended, what ha happened? They announced that the Freety result ruling council had decided to confess. So that's, that's just what we need. What happened as soon as the cheat chat ended? So as soon as, as soon as also introduces time, that's adverbial clause of time. Is it, it is adverbial clause because, it is a clause because of the verb ended. Ended is an action word showing the time in the past. Okay, so it modifies the verb and now this was what happened the moment the chit chat came to a halt. They announced something. So the announce is a verb that took place in the main clause. All right, I desire that we try out something and where we have difficulty, we could drop patients and they will be attempted. Bye. <laughs>